Forms. Many of us make our living writing applications that ask users to fill in forms. Form after form, page after page, we run out of forms. Angular has two ways to write forms, template-driven and reactive. Or as I like to say, there's the easy way and the hard way. Now, why on earth would you pick the hard way? Well, according to the Angular docs, template-driven forms don't scale as well as the reactive forms. If forms are a key part of your application, use reactive forms. Well, I guess I better go with reactive forms, right? I mean, how hard can it be? Well, it's pretty hard. You'll scroll 25 times to get through the reactive forms intro in the docs. Scroll another 10 times to learn to make them dynamic. You'll need to memorize the 10 specialized classes and directives, each bristling with properties, methods, and eccentricities. To lock in the basics, well, there's just a three-hour Pluralsight course by my pal Deborah Carrada. Do I really need to know all of that? Does everyone on my team need to learn all of that just to write a form in my app? Template-driven seems to be just ng model and basic Angular template syntax. What's wrong with that? Well, I quote again. Reactive forms are more robust. They're more scalable, reusable, and testable. Template-driven forms focus on simple scenarios and are not as reusable. Okay, with all due respect, in my experience, none of this is valid. None of it. Zero. So what is your experience, Ward? Well, I'm a practicing professional developer. I write real applications for real customers every day. My consulting company, IdeaBlade, has been building forms over data apps for two decades. Over the last three years, we built a business-critical Angular app for one of the largest payroll companies in the US. It serves tens of thousands of customers. It's fully reactive, built on NGRX, NGRX data to be precise, with RxJS threaded everywhere. There are over 200 components, and it's 100% template-driven forms. You want complicated? A payroll app is a lot like a tax preparation app, like TurboTax. There's federal tax law, there are 50 different states, each with its own income taxes, unemployment taxes. Some states have local taxes and local tax authorities. In Pennsylvania, you can live in the same zip code, move across the street, and pay a different tax to a different tax authority. So when I read that template-driven forms is only for simple scenarios, I just have to laugh. What can't I do with template driven? Well, for three years, I've been asking this question to many folks. What can reactive forms do that template driven forms cannot do that I actually want to do? And here's what they say. You can't use template driven forms with NGRX. I just did it. Template driven forms mutate state. Reactive forms don't. They can't handle complex scenarios such as responding reactively when a field value changes or fields that appear and disappear dynamically, fields that are required only if some other field says so, uh, dynamic lists whose items you can add, edit, and remove, custom validations. Now we can look at these claims with the help of a simple app that I've written for you. It's in StackBlitz. You can study it later and give me your feedback. Here's how it works. We edit information about a hero who has a heroic name, an alter ego, a street name, and a hero power. The hero power can vary in quality, which you set with a power qualifier. A hero can like things. There are several implementations. We'll get to that later. The form status fields are values reported by the ng form object. They change as we change the hero. We can save as long as the form is valid. Fields with a green bar on the left are required, so if we wipe out the name, the save button is disabled. Cancel discards on save changes and displays the current state of the hero. We'll discover other features as we go. Let's start with the data. We've got a relational model, as enterprise apps often do. There are two related collections, heroes and likes. Each hero can have zero or more likes. 
For demo purposes, we keep these data in a behavior subject like NGRX does. Our little data service wraps this entity state in a facade, as you might do in an NGRX app. We inject this into our top level container component. Yeah, we're using the container presenter pattern. Here you see the current hero and likes observable, reactively delivering the store's current hero and likes graph. Now, this state must be immutable, right? Are we stuck? Heck no, we've created a view model. A view model here produced by this view model observable is an object that holds whatever you need to drive the view, whatever you want to present to the user, whatever else you might need to make the view work. In our demo, it has the same shape as the data in the store. That's not necessary, but it is typical. The critical thing to notice is that we cloned the data from the store. The view model is disconnected from the shared state. We can mutate this view model to our heart's contain and no one outside the view will know about it. And that's exactly what we'll do. We'll bind the HTML controls to properties of the view model. The user's changes will update, that is to say mutate that view model without affecting the shared state visible elsewhere in the app. Finally, when the user asks to save, we pass that view model to our data service to update the store and the server. If the user clicks cancel instead, we call close and do nothing. We just throw the view model away and leave. Shared state is untouched. But Ward, I don't have to clone the data in reactive forms. Reactive forms are already immutable. Are you kidding? What do you think you're doing when you populate the form control with model data? You are copying the shared state piece by piece into the form control tree. That's called cloning and Reactive Forms modifies that internal clone data as the user types. That's mutation. In neither case are we mutating the shared state, and that's all that immutability requires. Now, there is an important difference. In template-driven, we can often clone with a simple generic expression, and we always have transparent access to the clone in the view model, which looks exactly like the way we think about the data for this form. The reactive form developer must copy each property individually, one by one. That's tedious and error prone. And the clone data is hidden away inside the control tree somewhere, which is cluttered with controlly stuff. You lose all your intuitions about the business model from which it came. Score an ease of use point for the template driven. Now I pass our view model observable to the hero form with the async pipe, of course. It arrives in the hero form presenter as an input variable, which is standard Angular practice. Look at this component class, reactive forms people. No form builder, no form controls, no form groups, no form arrays, no data copying or control configuration. Just some simple code devoted to the business of presentation. I repeat, no form control tree setup. Nothing to write, nothing to unit test. This is a big deal. We're talking about eliminating complexity, not just one time or a few times, but in every form you write. If you have 100 template-driven form components, that's 100 times that you did not write control code. Pure, inescapable, ironclad arithmetic. Let's look at the components template. Holy smokes, there's a bunch of subcomponents inside the forms tag. Yes, we broke this potentially gigantic form HTML into smaller components, each focused on a part of the form, and we passed the view model into each one. I'm going to come back to that later. Let's drill into the hero uh, edit names component, starting with the component class. Hey, nothing there. Nothing to you to test. Sweet. Let's look at that name field in the template. There's ng model banana in a box. That's two-way data binding of a view model property to the HTML input box. The user types something and the bound view model property updates. It's dead simple. Most new Angular developers are used to this idea because they've seen it before in other binding frameworks. Now notice that name directive. This will be the name of the form control that Angular builds for us under the hood. We don't actually care about this name because template-driven developers do not care about form controls. Angular insists that we provide the name anyway, so by convention, we set it to the property name. Now, the hero name is required, so we add the required attribute, 
Conveniently, this is also a canned Angular validation directive that plugs into the Forms API. Notice the green bar indicating required. When we erase the hero name, the input box gets a red left border, indicating that the field is invalid. This all comes for free because Angular adds and removes the ng invalid CSS class to the HTML. Notice that the Save button is disabled because we want to stop the user from saving if any field on the form is invalid. How did we do that? Let's bounce up a level to the Hero Form component again for a look at the form tag. Notice the Hero Form equals ng form. That's the pound symbol plus Hero Form, and that's a template reference variable. That's standard Angular syntax to create a variable that you can set and reference in the template. We're setting the template reference variable to a special value, ng form, which is a reference to the underlying Angular form control. Yeah, I know I said I don't care about the form controls, and that's generally true. But occasionally we care about the overall state of the form. Down in the buttons area, we see that we're disabling the save button if that form is not valid, which means that one of the controls somewhere in the form is not valid. In the status area, which is here for the demo, we look at the hero form ref variable again to display the status flags for the entire form, just to show that we can. You do something like this in reactive forms. Where did the form control come from? Fun fact, template-driven and reactive forms share the same forms API. Under the hood of a template-driven form is a form control tree made up of the same stuff as in a reactive forms control tree. There is a critical difference. In reactive forms, you write and maintain the form control tree by hand. In template-driven, Angular writes and maintains that control tree for you. Now, to my way of thinking, in reactive forms, I'm working for Angular. In template-driven, Angular works for me. Hey, a framework is supposed to work for me. That's why I'm using it. Why should I work for Angular? Angular isn't paying me to write this application. My client is. There is no hidden magic here either. I'm not cut off from the control tree that Angular produced. I can access that control tree anywhere, anytime. I just don't have to write it. And importantly, my access is not limited to the template. I can also access it in my component class by injecting it. In the components class, we use addViewChild to inject it. That's standard Angular dependency injection. There's nothing template driven about this. Look down at the inspect method, which is wired to the inspect button. It dumps the injected forms control tree and values to the console. We can also tap the value changes observable, in this case, from the form control. When the user stops typing, we look for a name change and write it to the console. Then when we change the name to Dr. Bob, there it is in the console. We could modify this tree directly if we want. For example, we could add and remove validators. Not that I'm likely to do that. What about those dynamic scenarios? In general, I don't care about the form control tree, and I certainly don't need the form controls to accomplish dynamic effects. For example, in this app, hero powers can be qualified by a degree from lame to amazing, like really smart here. Most hero powers have qualifiers, but some do not. The business rule is as follows. The hero power qualifier is required, but only if the hero's selected power has some qualifiers. So when we select none, there are no qualifiers and the power qualifier selector is disabled. Notice that the form is still valid and the changes can be saved even though there is no power qualifier. This works because the form's API does not validate disabled controls. So Angular ignores the required directive on the qualifier and the form is valid. And that's true for reactive forms as well. We use standard Angular binding to the disabled property of the button to achieve this effect. No special forms API stuff. Let's take it a step further. There's a power called other, and there's no list of predetermined qualifiers for that. But we require that you explain what that other power is. So we require a free form qualifier. A selector is not the correct experience for a free form qualifier. So notice that instead of disabling the power qualifier selector, we replace it with an input box that is required. Did we do this with form controls? No way. 
We use the Garden Variety NGIF to swap out the selector and swap in the text box. Simple, intuitive. What about dynamic lists? A hero has zero or more likes. This demo shows six different ways to implement the likes UI, including no UI at all. While the differences among them are beyond the scope of this talk, they all have something in common. They all use NG4. You can add, edit, and remove them. There's required validation, and there's a custom forbidden name validation for Star Wars. And here's the HTML. There's the vanilla NG4 syntax, iterating over a model array, not over controls, over a model array. There's the NG model binding. There's a pound like name template reference to the underlying NG model control, which we're passing along to a validation error display component. This is standard intuitive use of the Angular you already know. Almost no code behind either, of course. These likes are part of the outer form. When we click inspect and look at the browser control, we see that no matter how deep the component structure, all the controls at every level bubble up to the form. That means we can leverage the top level form status fields to learn if there's trouble inside. The control tree is flat in this example. We could add structure, which you could see in the other like implementations, but why bother if we don't care about that structure? And why should we care? We don't need it. All the structure we need is in the view model, which holds all the user's changes. In my many years with template-driven forms, I've never structured the control tree, never wanted to. I want to make a final point about building the form with subcomponents. We've gone overboard with the subcomponents in this demo app. What I'm trying to stress here is that in template-driven forms, we can refactor at will. It's easy. Building reactive forms with nested components is hard, very hard. Just ask anyone who builds reactive forms. You can't just move the HTML around like we're doing here. You have to refactor all the code you wrote to build the form control tree too. And then you have to figure out how to plumb the data through all those components. Refactoring is a big deal. Forms in a real world app have tons of fields that are constantly appearing and disappearing. When you pour all of that complexity into a single component, the HTML and control tree setup code quickly grow to enormous size. That huge, messy component is tough to comprehend and tough to maintain. You will want to refactor it. But when refactoring is too hard, you don't do it. You just suffer. I don't have time to cover validation or testing. You may safely assume that both validation and testing are easily managed in template-driven forms. I'd love to talk about eliminating forms boilerplate and how everybody does validation wrong. You're doing it wrong. And how to do it right with model-driven validation. So let's get together again soon, huh? But meanwhile, you have a choice. Do you want to be an angular Olympic athlete and flex on reactive forms? Or do you want to get some work done? Do you want to work for Angular? Or do you want Angular to work for you? You can choose for yourself and your team to do it the easy way, the template-driven forms way. I'm Ward Bell, and that's the way it is. All of the code, and much more that we couldn't get to, is on StackBlitz. If you have a question or an idea, reach out to me here. And if your project could use some help, please contact me and my wonderful colleagues at IdeaBlade. Thanks for watching.